everyone and welcome to edu search small talk series where we discuss some key topics related to common surgical practice today we are going to discuss a very basic overview on the management options in metastatic rectal cancer so we are going to define or at least understand what is stage 4 rectal cancer we are going to see where all the disease can spread then we are going to see what are the different treatment options such as chemotherapy radiation surgery and or palliation the most important part of this talk is the treatment sequencing so a lot of patients also ask us what is stage 4 rectal cancer should we take chemo radiation surgery and how to sequence them so this talk is going to give you a very basic overview of how and when we select which option and why so first of all let us see what is stage 4 for metastatic disease for any cancer but right now we are focusing on rectal cancer a very simplistic definition for this is that the disease goes beyond the rectum and regional lymph nodes so as we all know the cancers drain through the lymph nodes so when the disease goes beyond the organ as well as its regional drainage it is known as stage 4 disease so stage 4 disease can involve in rectal cancer the most common site being liver lungs brain bone as well as peritoneum so these are some of the very common sites of metastasis what is metastasis it is disease beyond the primary organ and its regional draining lymph node so distant lymph nodal disease for example when the disease is in rectum and you have a lymph node in the thorax which is fdg positive or pet positive then that is also stage 4 metastatic disease so what is stage 4 disease we know now and common sites of metastasis are liver lung brain bone and peritoneum as well as non regional lymph nodes right these are the common sites of metastasis so as we all know rectal cancer is quite common however the bigger problem is that 50 to 60% of patients with colorectal cancer will present with metastasis so one out of two patients will present with metastasis to doctors and this is the sad reality of the cancer care as of now metachronous is more common more than 60% and synchronous that is patient presenting up front with disease in the rectum as well as metastasis is seen in 20 to 34% of the patients one very important point that we have a lot of advances now and that is why this talk is very important so that you understand what the different options are and this is important because if the patient is not treated then survival is only 5 to 6 months as per the data however if you treat these patients more than 30% of them may go beyond 5 years depending on the other prognostic factors that we will see so what are the treatment options as you all know one of the major treatment options for stage 4 disease is chemotherapy now chemotherapy is injectable drugs or tablets for rectal cancer however when you come to rectal cancer specialist as a chemotherapy doctor or a medical oncologist you will hear terms like targeted therapy immunotherapy neoadjuvant adjuvant and palliative right these five terms can be confusing but actually they are not they are all basically the same drugs which can be given injectable or orally if it is given before surgery it is known as neo adjuvant if it is given after surgery it is known as adjuvant and if the intent of treatment is only to control symptoms and not provide cure it is a palliative setting right the first possible regime that you receive is known as first line therapy if the disease progresses on first line therapy the drugs are changed and that is known as second line therapy and so on 
targeted therapy and immunotherapy for a patient perspective is again only drugs which have specific targets of action in the body so immunotherapy works on the immunity molecules targeted therapy works on some receptor molecules but basically all of them are chemotherapy when it comes to a patient so first option is chemotherapy second option in stage 4 is a well planned and executed surgery again an option in stage 4 disease is radiotherapy and last but not the least this is a very important area in stage 4 disease is supportive care that is symptomatic relief to the patient and palliation so these are basically the four key options that you have for treatment of patient with stage 4 rectal cancer now we come to the most important part of this stack and that is treatment sequencing and i have tried to keep it very basic so that you can show this to your patients also and it will help the doctors who are just beginning to learn cancer to understand how these treatment sequencing takes place in stage 4 disease which is otherwise a very complicated literature so what is step 1 when a patient like this presents to you the step 1 is assessment of resectability as we all know colorectal cancer even in stage 4 can undergo surgery so assessment of resectability is the step 1 where we assess patient fitness we assess extent of disease right we assess patient fitness we assess the extent of disease extent of disease can be assessed with the help of a pet ct or a ct abdomen and pelvis and hrct test both are okay to assess the extent of disease we then assess the organ fitness for example if we have to excise liver with rectum in stage 4 cancer then we have to assess if that liver is fit for surgery right so patient fitness extent of disease that needs removal organ fitness then we have to assess the prognostic factors if a patient has good prognostic factors we try to reject even as an extended indication if the patient has poor prognostic factors we know that the patient may have an adverse outcome and hence an supra major surgery is not advocated in such patients so this is the basic step 1 that is when the patient presents to you this is what you have to assess in the multidisciplinary meeting so a medical oncologist has to assess the patient and a surgical oncologist as well as other team members including a radiologist all have to assess the patient now once you assess the patient if the patient can be a resectable can be did neoadjuvant therapy that is chemotherapy before surgery can be given without targeted therapy newer evidences are coming up that in colorectal cancer immunotherapy is better than normal chemotherapy however for this talk all you need to understand is that for patients who can be given an r0 resection the neoadjuvant therapy does not need targeted therapy reassessment occurs at 4 to 6 cycles of neoadjuvant therapy if r0 is not feasible that is if the surgeon is quite sure that even after chemotherapy the, the disease may not be completely resectable then the neoadjuvant therapy is given with targeted therapy and again reassessment is done at 4 to 6 months so both the groups received chemotherapy and then they undergo reassessment this reassessment is done with pet ct it is done with tumor markers it is done with patient performance status now after reassessment if surgery is r0 as per the surgeon the patient can undergo the surgery if the patient has stable disease that is the disease has not reduced in size then we have to assess the prognostic factors if the patient has good prognostic factors and is otherwise fit or if the tumor markers are coming down but imaging wise the disease is not showing response these are case based approaches where 
the expertise and experience of the surgeon and the treating team comes into play. If the patient unfortunately progresses or if is not tolerating the therapy that was started, this is a time where you will have to switch to second line chemotherapy, immunotherapy with targeted therapy. Of course, the patient who has progressed is a patient in whom 99% of the time R0 is not feasible. And this is the patient where you may have to switch to second line therapy. Now comes a group where R0 was feasible because we are talking of colon and rectal cancer both. A point to highlight here is that you can perform simultaneous surgery for the rectum as well as the metastatic disease. However, if you are performing a simultaneous surgery for low rectal cancer, and this point is specific only for the low rectal cancer, then in this group, you can give them neoadjuvant radiation. Our group's practice is very clear that for low and mid-rectal cancer, even in stage 4, after neoadjuvant therapy and before operating the rectum, we always give neoadjuvant chemo radiation. So that is a point to be highlighted. So once the surgery is performed, if R0 is achieved, the patient only needs to continue chemotherapy and targeted therapy is not required. Follow-up in this case is three monthly for the first two years and six monthly thereafter. If the patient did not achieve R0, then you should continue chemo if there was response, add targeted agent to it if it was not already added and attempt R0 again at four to six months, just like step one and two. So you review step one and two Every time the patient cannot reach an R0, the attempt is to make the patient cancer-free by using all these modalities. If the patient had no surgery to begin with, that is R0 was not feasible or the patient progressed on chemotherapy, then you should continue downstaging with patient fitness and various lines of treatment such as liver-specific therapies like RFA, Transarterial chemoembolization, portal vein embolization, all these different modalities can be used to make the disease resectable or at least to achieve disease control. Just a short word on targeted therapy to revise because this is a bit of a confusing topic. If the patient has R0 disease, you can avoid targeted therapy in the neoadjuvant setting. All other cases will need targeted therapy in neoadjuvant setting. What is targeted therapy if the patient has RAS mutation? The current targeted therapy agents include cetuximab or penitumumab. And if the patient has VEGF mutation or vascular endothelial growth factor mutation, the targeted therapy used is bevacizumab. Surgery, as I already discussed, can be upfront surgery, that is surgery without any chemotherapy. Most commonly, it is neoadjuvant therapy followed by surgery or downstaging followed by surgery. As I already discussed, you can do a simultaneous primary organ and the metastatic organ surgery at the same time, and this is safe and very easily feasible in experienced centers. Palliative surgery is not routinely recommended as of now. That is the rejection of primary is to be limited to local complications, which include bleeding, obstruction or perforation. Just in brief, the prognostic factors include the age and the performance status of the patient. Younger patients tend to have poor prognosis. Histological grade poorly differentiated tumors have poorer prognosis. CEA is not prognostic. The change in the level of CEA is more important and slightly more prognostic. A single CEA value of 200 does not mean poor prognosis. A single CEA value of 5 does not mean good prognosis. Biomarkers are routinely done these days and BRAF mutations are associated with poor prognosis. 
number in sight of metastasis as we all know the form score and the tumor burden is also shown to be adversely prognostic so these are some of the factors that we consider while explaining prognosis to the patient of course one of the most important clinical marker of prognosis is response to neoadjuvant therapy a patient who responds well to neoadjuvant therapy is going to do well and that is what is meant by the biology of the disease if you have gone through the literature on cancer it is very clearly said that biology is the king so a tumor which responds to chemotherapy has a good prognosis generally so that is why response to therapy is one of the most important prognostic factors that i look for for selecting patients for surgery so key messages in this talk are that metastatic colorectal cancer is treatable and survivals are significantly better when we use appropriate sequencing of treatment a multimodal discussion is the key to treating these patients neoadjuvant therapy is a good tool for selection of patients with good biology tumor which will do well as they have good prognosis mutational analysis of braf ras and msi are important and they help in selection of targeted therapy and immunotherapy palliative resection of asymptomatic primary as of now is not recommended and i am sure from this talk it is very clear that careful patient selection and individualization of treatment approach is the key for optimal outcomes thank you